Uh, needless to say, it was a cold night last night. <laughs> but we stayed fairly warm in the van. Um, but those hot springs are definitely calling. But our bathing suits are still probably frozen from last night. <laughs> it's such a cool scene. Seeing the steam rise through the sunrise. Hi, I'm Liz, and my other half is Charlie. And we are exceptionally frugal. That's why we're traveling the U.S. in our minivan Opal, paving the way for others to see that traveling on a budget can be quite fun. We love the outdoors and we have tried to avoid cities, do lots of hiking, and have a strange obsession with rocks. So hop in the van and let's see what kind of adventure we can find. After coffee and breakfast tacos, we decided to head out towards Topaz Mountain in search of adventure. Well, we just got out of the car. We're here for Obsidian, and there's a piece of Wonderstone right here. It's a bit saturated, so the bands aren't that great. Still cool. There goes Charlie with a sifter and his tools. Might even be Topaz here. Well, this is awesome. The obsidian is everywhere. And I'm seeing some other material too. Not sure what that is. They're just everywhere, aren't they? They're so beautiful. Crazy. Shimmery. These are pretty cool. Uh, already got quite a bit of a uh, bucket full. Um, just in like five minutes of being here. So these little tiny pieces of obsidian, they call them Apache Tears. The reason they call it Apache Tears is there's a legend that a cavalry of white men came in and um, savagely murdered all the Apache warriors and the women were left behind and their sorrow was so strong that their tears flooded the land, these dark tears, and they turned to stone so that they would always be a reminder of what had happened. Now obsidian, they say, is a representation of bravery. If you need to be brave, you should keep obsidian with you on your person. I just think that's kind of cool. They even say that it's these Apache tears have like a friendly feeling to them, a healing feeling. And not to get all woo woo on you guys, but they do. I feel friends with these rocks right here. These little pebbles. They do have a good feel to them. I love them. I might send them to some people I love. I think we're gonna sort through what we wanna keep and leave the rest for somebody else and See what else we can find in the area. But this is really cool. There's, they're everywhere. Like, thousands of them. It's crazy. And that's Topaz Mountain. Where, uh, there's lots of topaz. There's Opal. All right, let's see how full that bucket is. Not very. But it's got some cool stuff in it. Oh, yeah. I didn't go crazy this time. Let's see what I got. Yeah, not too crazy. We're getting better at this. <laughs> <laughs> Back to Opal. 
So I was just getting ready to put stuff back in the car and I looked down and saw this. What is that? Is that an agate? It is an agate. <gasps> no way. Look <gasps> at that. That is gorgeous. It is. Wow. What the heck? Here, let me, let's get a close up of that. Yeah. Wow. I'm like excited about that. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. Okay. Let's show them too. Holy smokes. I'll get it. Wow. Look at that. That is beautiful. Dang. Let's spray this off. This spray bottle isn't the best, but. That's working. Just... Wow. Holy smokes. Dang. What the heck? That's betroidal. Oh my god. Nuh uh. That is a beautiful agate. Just That is the most beautiful <sighs> agate ever. Wow. <laughs> and we just Gosh. drove right over it. Uh, yeah, and we just drove right uh, a thousand people have just drove right over it. Look at this. <laughs> We're like right in the middle of this campsite area. <laughs> and it's just right here. Wow. Dang. I want to find more of that. Yeah. It's hard to show you the betroidal in it because it's so clear, but it is beautiful. That looks like I found a doozy too. Look at this. That is gorgeous. And then found this piece of jasper. This whole thing is full of jasper. What is that? I don't know. A little squirrel? <laughs> it's still there. Yeah. It's a white back. <laughs> Caught it on camera. Walk here. Ooh, there's bands of So we're just gonna kinda check the gravel bars around here. The road got a little rough. But looks like there's plenty of cool stuff. Oh, I just rolled up. Well, not rolled up. I just hiked up this hill. Check out the view. That's gorgeous. A beautiful place. It's a big old piece of mahogany obsidian, and there's a bug in there with druzy in it. Oh, gosh, I hope you guys can see the crystals inside of that. Wow. Let's try and get different light, maybe. There you can kind of see the druzy. What the heck? That's an awesome piece. See that mahogany? Beautiful. Nice little pocket of druzy in there. Look at that sparkle. Where are we headed to next? Wherever the road takes us. Looks like it's taking us that way. 
Well, then I guess we're going that way. I like our fruit bowl over here. We got some bananas, some grapes, some apples. <laughs> not just to make us look healthy. We actually have bugles and peanuts and stuff in the back. <laughs> You're not supposed to tell them about the bugles. Oh, they need to know. <laughs> We're human. <laughs> We are going up Butterscotch Hill right now. Apparently there is yellow jasper and red agate. Jasper pebbles? Just pebbles of the jasper. Oh, that's yeah. probably what that, was, that little pebble was that we found. It was a jasper pebble. So I'm not entirely sure if this is Butterscotch Hill, but um, it's around the area that the map is telling me. It's not a very good map. But it brings you to the general area. So hopefully, this is Butterscotch Hill. Show me. Just a little pebble. And it looks like Butterscotch. Yeah, it does. Okay, this might be the right place. Uh, this is the Thompson Range. Um, and uh, the world's largest beryllium mine is that way, about four miles, which is kind of cool. Uh, apparently it's no trespassing, blah, blah, blah. But uh, somewhere, in the, in the, somewhere in the vicinity of that area, there's Tiffany Stone. And uh, apparently it's getting harder and harder to find Tiffany Stone. Um, in that area, at least. But just a little tidbit I read off that My Maps thing. Uh, if you're looking for rocks in your state, try Googling my maps, all one word, and then your state and rock hounding, or just Google my maps rock hounding, and you'll come up with a bunch of different state ones. I found one for Oregon, Montana, all, all sorts of different states, but it'll give you, you know, a general idea of what, what you can find in the area. So far, I have not found any of this butterscotch or red agate. It's supposed to be red agate here. Giant. Ooh. Hello there. Whoa. Don't come towards me. You're big. You're probably nice though. <laughs> Can you just go the other way? <laughs> I'm busy looking at rocks. So after all that walking around and stuff, uh, they're all around the van. Like, all around. Little tiny Butterscotch pebbles. Eh, kind of cool. But we didn't even have to walk to get them. Look at them. There's one. There's one there. There's one there. There's one there. Little Jasper pebbles. After driving all the way out here, we see the sign. It's a National Backcountry Byway. We're gonna have to look that up when we get to service to see if we can find more of those. That sounds right up our alley. So Baz Mountain is 22 miles, 20 miles that way. Delta is 62 miles that way.
And one bird. This whole refuge oh. is for that one bird. That's really nice of them. Yeah. <laughs> That's a beautiful pond. I think it's a red winged blackbird. Was it? Oh, oh, there's more of them. Listen. There's the cave. This area is called Cave Hot Spring. We know nothing about it. So the cave is completely caged off, but apparently there's evidence that uh, that humans inhabited this cave, or at least had been here, 11,000 years ago. Pretty cool. That's and they, awesome. found, they found artifacts here. What a view. Make sure you get that dark spot up there. That's kind of cool. And you can see on the ceiling here where the smoke from fires that have been in here is oh my gosh. stained the ceiling. You can. Wow. Yeah. I wonder if they found uh, like pictographs or petroglyphs. I'm wondering yeah. because that dark sp spot in the back looks like it's been chipped out. It does. That's awesome. Yeah. So we saw this on the map um, and we decided to check it out because we were just at a hot spring and uh, it was it just said hot spring cave. We had no service to look it up or anything which you know Makes it more exciting when you get here. Absolutely. But I'm glad there was a, a little board explaining why it's gated off and um, that it's on the National Historic Registry. And uh, they don't allow anybody in unless it's uh, for furthering public education and you have to be a qualified professional. I'm sure it's a great bat habitat too. Yeah. Way cool. Yeah. It's amazing. All right, shall we slide on our butts all the way down? Oh, but <laughs> can you imagine being a hunter gatherer out here and just being able to see the all the animals from up here? There's quite the variety out here too. We were looking at the pamphlet for the wildlife refuge and there was like over 200 species of wildlife that you can find out here. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. So no wonder the natives were out this way. So Charlie was saying that this whole area used to be Lake Bonneville, all of this. And it has slowly evaporated over many, many hundreds of years, thousands. thousands of years. And all that is left is Lake Utah and... The Great Salt Lake. Wow. So that was part of Lake Bonneville at one point. That was a massive body of water. Well, yeah. I mean, it, you can see where it was. It's gigantic. Let's do another pan. That's insane. Take that in. That's a lot of water to not have anymore. Look at those guys. Excuse me. 
there's the road noise. Um, we were just thinking that like this big flat area here would be so boring if we didn't know the little bit of geology that we know. We felt that way all through Wyoming and through Utah, which, you know, a lot of it is flat, but there's so much geology here, it's crazy. Yeah, and, and like, after you understand the reasoning for things being flat and, and, you know, like ice ages and things like that, it really opens your eyes to what, uh, you know, to just how the world worked and how the world it works. Yeah. Like, like it's it's a history lesson as you drive. And what's happening happening to it? You can kind of see what's what's happening next in a certain area. Yeah. You know, like you know, as the Great Basin dries up, you have all this desert land. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Crazy. And like we just, Ooh, we're coming bright. through some some mountains here, and we don't even know what's next. No. You guys will find out though. Let's let's put your heads out the window, yo. It's been 60 miles since we left the pavement, as our wheels kept turning toward that beautiful Utah sunset. Little did we know that this night would bring us nearly 100 miles deep into the most remote area we have ever been in our entire lives. It is there, without cell service, in a town mostly occupied by ghosts and crumbling buildings. Our luck would turn and this adventure would continue to the wee hours of the very next day.